Hello! Welcome to another video. This one brought to you by my appropriately sized greatsword. Let's get started. So, as I said in the end of the last episode, we would be tackling the, uh, I don't even want to say the name anymore, but the Lost Bestier. <laughs> oh man, I fell. There's an item on that ledge right there. You might want to grab it. Um, so then, there are a bunch of dogs down there. If you just nudge that barrel down, it takes care of that problem. One usually survives. Oh, looks like we, we did well that time. Okay, so then in here, this area, you'll actually be able to fight the pursuer. So this is probably the first place um, that you encounter where the pursuer actually pursues you other than the very beginning. So if you go over here, go to open this chest, he will spawn in. All right. He, um, I think he drops like Twinkling Titanite or something. I don't quite remember, so let's take him out. Pretty much the same as uh, as the boss fight. Not too much health to be honest. Although I am hitting pretty hard right now. Oh man. I forget most of his moveset because I only ever see that attack since every time I fight him I just parry him and then kill him with a ballista. That blue um, sword stab if he hits you with that, it's going to, like, you're going to get caught on his sword, and it's going to inflict some, uh, let's see. No, it just curses you outright. So I think curse in this game just basically, like, hollows you. It doesn't just kill you. There we go, Twinkling Titanite. Um, yeah, like, in Dark Souls 1, it kills you, and your, your total HP is halved until you lift the curse. So it's, like, a big deal. Then we get Covetous, Silver Serpent Ring, Human Effigy, and Fragrant Branch of Yore, which you will need that last item to actually get to the boss in this area. So, good uh, good to go down there. Oh, but like I said, if you don't want to fight the Pursuer, you can still open that chest. You just walk over to it, act like you're going to open it. I would not recommend actually opening it so you don't get locked in the animation. Wait for him to start spawning in. Run in here, he will not follow you, and he'll just despawn. So, pretty uh, easy there. These guys can be kind of annoying. Not if you two shot them. I should mention, I <laughs> grabbed the great sword and leveled it up to plus five. I had not spent any Titanite yet. Um, so we're doing a good bit of damage now. 300 plus 94. I do have to two hand it to actually use it right now. Um, but you can't get back to that bonfire without homeward boning or, uh, or dying. So keep that in mind when you traverse over to the side. Moving forward though. So I think I, I'm trying to like remember the layout of this area in my head. Like I said earlier, it's really large. But uh, I think that this side of it is completely optional. I think this boss we're about to do is actually optional. I'm not 100% sure, but I think you can get to the main boss in this area, the one that actually carries a great soul from the, uh, the back way that you unlock through No Man's Wharf that I showed last episode. So. We're gonna we're gonna test the waters there, see if that's true. But Lucatiel appears again. That might be you. You haven't changed a bit, have you? <laughs> the longer I am here, the more madness I discover. A wretched place indeed, but not without traces of its former glory. Oh whoops. Uh, yes. I skipped the last one. This is for you. Yay. No idea what it is. Oh. Just gave her gave us her, her garbage that she doesn't want. And constantly at war. There is only one way up in mirror. Join the order and prove yourself in battle. My family had little fortune and no name. I had to carve out a piece of the world for myself with two things. My sword, and my loyalty to my lord. I was raised to wield a sword from birth. Life was hard, but I never gave it a second thought. I had swift success on the battlefield, and quickly attained respectable stature. And then I... And then I came here... to... Have you heard of the undead? 
These poor souls affected by the curse. An undead gradually loses his humanity until his wits degrade completely. Finally, he turns hollow and preys upon others. And a hollow can never be human again. One can skirt this wicked fate only with the help of the souls found here. Assuming, of course, that the legends are true, I can only hope that they are. So as you saw there, she takes off her mask and uh, her face is, is uh, kind of messed up. She's starting to turn hollow. That's not really how it works, to be honest with you. But that's how it works for Lucatiel, I guess. <laughs> Um, when you, when you die, you just, like, my, my entire body turns green and disgusting looking. So, she's lucky, honestly. But, Lugatil's got kind of an interesting story. One of the better characters in this game. So, that's going to be the path forward. But, before we get on to that, oh, yes, I can just stagger you guys. It's going to make this so much better. I'm going to point out, before we get up to him, there's a barrel resting sideways right in front of the enemy what you're gonna do is what I do here don't roll into it because you'll break it like this um, don't let him hit it or and don't hit it yourself with a swing because it'll explode if you get near that enemy he'll automatically go into a swing trying to uh, kill you and if you're too close well it, it's actually not up to you he'll, he'll just swing all the way through that barrel and it'll explode uh, blowing up and hurting both of you so you want to be sprinting and go right into the barrel and push it straight down, if at all possible. Oh, you're kidding me. Alright, I messed it up. It's uh, kind of a difficult mechanic. Let me see if I can get these dogs over here. I want to avoid... That barrel. Oh boy, that was... That was just bad. Okay. Gonna try and nudge it over that way. That should be good. Oh, stay. It's just pushing me. Okay, good. We have fire bombs. This is good. This is good. Stay. All right. So ideally, when it rolls down these stairs, it won't just take a turn at the end there and lose all its momentum. It'll smash into that wall. But if that doesn't happen, hopefully it's still alive. Hit it with a firebomb and the wall will explode. That is the only way to open this up. Um, if the barrel gets destroyed up there or down here for whatever reason, you're just going to have to reset that bonfire back there. Homeward bone out of here, whatever you got to do. And uh, try it again. And you're going to want to try it again because... Um, there's a blacksmith in here. He's the good blacksmith too. Not that the other one in Majula is bad, but this one can do... Can do weapon infusions and everything. This is Steady Hand McDuff. Completely losing his mind. So I'm not even gonna really bother talking to him. Now you can open up all these chests and literally just take everything inside, but if you light your torch right here and light that right there, then the rest of the bonfire, leave the area, whatever. He moves over here and starts smithing again. He just wants to sit wherever there's light. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up all these chests real quick. Get two large Titanite shards from that one. Iron arrows there. Five Titanite shards. Ten heavy bolts. Craftsman's hammer and another twinkling titanite. So, if we talk to him. So, when he says all he wants is a little flame, he wants the dull ember that we picked up right after we killed the pursuer and traveled here originally. It's in one of those two chests right by the first bonfire in this area. So, go ahead and give it to him. There's no other blacksmith in the game you can give embers to. So, at this point, he just works like a normal blacksmith. Oh, I can upgrade that again. Nice. Um, but he does infusions, like I said, so... 
These are all the different kinds of infusions. It says at the bottom what the requirements are. It shows how it would adjust the scaling. And uh, there's, there's a lot in this game. I'll probably explain them later. But you can, like I said, like same with the resins, like you can, there's one for every single damage type. You got magic, fire, lightning, dark, poison, bleed. Uh, raw just gets rid of the scaling or, or significantly reduces it, I guess, and just ups your actual physical damage. Um, oh wait, that's, that's magic, and then this is, I don't know, one of these is, is magic, the other one's like enchanted or something. I don't quite remember. I never really used that one. And then mundane makes it scale with your lowest stat. So that's that one was kind of crazy back in the day before they nerfed it. Basically, if you leveled up all of your stats equally, like imagine by the end of the game, I had 20 in every single stat. It scales with everything. So it's kind of crazy. Anyways. Moving on, I did buy a whole bunch of life gems from uh, Malentia, by the way. That's why I have 29 of them, or however many that says there. So, let's see. Okay, there is a, a lever on that side. So, yeah, you can... Oh, I don't know, I'll show that in another episode. But right over there is like the back entrance to this area that we showed off last time. Back here, got some gold pine and resin. Now we're kind of just backtracking to the area I pointed out earlier. Oh, you're still alive. Get out of here. Oh yeah. Feels good. Alright, so this is a statue. I pointed this out earlier in the playthrough. You need fragrant branches of yore. Got that item I missed by the pursuer. just staring me in the face. He's gonna take his sweet time to get up. You can't hit him for some reason until he stands all the way up. Then you kill him. Just a normal hollow. Um, but yeah, if you don't have a fragrant branch, this area will be kind of difficult to get through. Impossible, actually. So run in here, and then run straight back out like 12 enemies are going to chase you, so you don't really want to fight them all right there. This is a pretty tough little spot here if you don't have a lot of damage output. I literally have the perfect weapon for this though right now, so that's about as easy as it's going to get. Now there should be, I mean there's still going to be a few scattered around here, but most of them come outside. Kill this guy through the through the cage there. And I recommend doing so. Oh, you're still alive too. Absolutely humiliating them. Solo Proud Knight human effigy. So if we slowly walk out of here, there are two enemies here. If you're quiet, you can probably get a backstab off. Oh man. What? I hit the ceiling with that swing. Let's try to do it. Hey, I can't even use it one-handed, but it just hits so hard. Okay. The one-handed move there is like really, really nice because Unless you do this this super wind up uh, two handed heavy attack, you don't really have any horizontal slashes. So there is a shade over there. Shades in this game are uh, a result of the small white so soapstone. They have a larger summoning range. So if you're trying to play with a friend for like a really small portion of time, I think the time limit on those is like five minutes, as opposed to the thirty limit time limit or thirty minute time limit on uh, the regular white sign soapstone. Um, but that is actually an NPC, and there is another NPC you can summon in this cage here. Now this boss, really weak to uh, magic, 
and uh, this actually happens to be a sorcerer. So we are going to grab this one. I'm not going to grab the other one just because I don't want this boss to have a crazy amount of health. That guy's flanking all the way around. He is. I respect the commitment. You can hear the other one down there too. Whatever, let's just get on with it. Um, so, I probably have some of this aromatic ooze still. This applies magic damage to your weapon. Um, these guys are, like I said, weak to magic, so that's a good choice. Gold pine resin works quite well um, also, so let's get into it. So start with, you're going to drop down, this guy's pretty much always going to go for that slam to begin with. Uh, you want to fight this one on the small platform. You can hop down, sometimes he falls, please, are you kidding me, he's walked off for no reason. Alright, well you can at least get a plunging attack. That was really bad. So ideally you kill him up there, and then the other two are going to join in on the fun. They tend to drop down a little quicker I find if you uh, end up down here on the bottom. Still alive. <laughs> Not even the boss is spared. So now that he's dead, the other two drop down. Basically with this fight, you kind of just want to keep them both in front of you. That's my best advice. And uh, if you can get one to aggro to the summon and one to aggro to you, that makes it a lot easier. You don't want both to be on the summon because she'll die pretty quick. And you probably don't want both to be on you because you'll die pretty quick. <laughs> so yeah, I'd recommend not locking on this fight just so it's easier to kind of see your surroundings. You kind of get tunnel vision if you're locked on. That spin is pretty nasty. Other one's getting hit pretty hard though right now. Oh, I thought I could get a swing in. Going for that spin again. Good dodge. Props. Yeah, see, she's getting kind of annihilated right now. Finish that one. I'll do it. There we go. Alright, one to go. And back out and heal. Fight's pretty much over once you get down to one. Individually, they're really not too bad. It's just uh, trying to fight multiples that's really difficult. So, there we go. Um, now, there are a whole bunch of secrets in this room. Yeah, you get them. Um, and I'll, let's see, I'll, I'll just open them up. There's a whole bunch of illusion walls the kind you press A on. They're really only on these brick ones, like these smoother walls don't tend to have them. I don't know, all the illusions in this game, I feel like, like this one's not an illusion. You see how it's like, it's a normal looking concrete wall, but then these like weird looking brick ones, I don't know. I feel like you can kind of visually tell them apart in some cases. Not all of them, but I don't know. No uh, no reason not to just <laughs> go around and press A on every wall though. You get a target shield from that. No, that one's empty, there's an item right here. That is a wooden chest that the target shield comes in, so sometimes when the rune sentinels are up against this wall, they'll actually break that while they're swinging. And so, uh, if you get rubbish in there, there's no chest, that's probably what happens. Not a huge deal, um, if you don't get the target shield, Buckler does the same thing if you are concerned with having a good parrying shield. Should be able to make that, yep, okay. Kind of a difficult jump to make. You don't actually have to make it though, this is also an illusion, you can come up the back way. You'll probably recognize this room as uh, as I step out of it. There you go. So you can just go up that way, get those homeward bones. That's probably the best item that you actually pick up in this area. But then, to continue, you want to just press on this way. And go through this doorway here. 
Now, there is an item there, but there's also a guy in here at the end of the hallway. You can see kind of some weird movement down there. If you get close to him, he'll explode, so run all the way through. Wonderful. And run back and get the item. Just this measly little soul, though. Um, now, that's the way that we go to progress. There is a bonfire in here. Really strange, but this is kind of a PvP hotspot. Not, I mean, actually, I, I do kind of know why. So, if I go down here, we're about to get pursued again. Spoiler alert. Get some free swings in while he's spawning in there. Again, do not want to be hit with that. I almost never kill the pursuers. <laughs> I just, uh, I don't know, but I don't find them to be too difficult, so might as well just show you guys what you get from them. I, I mean, most of them, I think, just drop the Twinkling Titanite. Now you've got a couple thousand souls out of it. A large club right there. Really good strength weapon, but I pretty much never use it because you can get the great sword before it. So. Okay, so I don't I'm not going to use this right here, but what what will happen if you pop a Ferris Lockstone here is I believe like right around here an illusion will pop up. Um and behind there is let's see, it's not Belfry Soul. Like maybe Belfry Luna or something like that. Um there is a, a, a gargoyles fight actually on the roof with four gargoyles. So twice as bad as the one in Dark Souls uh, 1. And there's also uh, the Bell Covenant there. Now, there are servants who will try to, like actual players who will invade people that are trespassing in that area and uh, who are trying to like ring the bell or whatever. So it's dangerous. You're probably gonna get invaded almost definitely. I mean, by this point, there's not that many people playing Dark Souls 2, so there's a good chance that you won't, to be honest, but... Um, do, do be prepared for that. Now, I think we're probably just going to wrap up this episode here. In the next one, I'll show uh, real quick how to get through this area from the back side. Actually, let's, let's explore a little bit. Let me see. Yeah, actually, I know where I want to end this episode. So let's go a little bit further. Because the two paths actually link up a little bit. Watch out for that guy. We picked up the uh, Bastille key. <laughs> Most people call it the Bastille or, or Bastille, but I just, I don't know. It's not good enough for me. So let's see, over here. You can actually see the gargoyles. They're hiding from. Oh, you see them there. Kind of cool. Um, God, I do not remember what's. Oh wait. Okay, so we're gonna come through here from the uh, from the back route anyway. So I'm not gonna bother with that right now. And if we come upstairs. I want to take this guy out. These guys, if they're glowing like yellow like that, there's a little cloud coming out. When they drop like that, they're going to do like durability damage and some regular damage as well, I think. What's in here? Okay. Um, so yeah, just kind of ignore them. Not ignore them, avoid them. And uh, try to take them out quick. They don't have much health, so easy one shot most of the time. There's a lever for that one, for that gate, not for this one though. That one explodes. And if you hit this gate, it'll open. If he explodes, it'll open it. These guys are pretty annoying though. I'm not a not a big fan. And they like to hide in these jars too. So there's one right there. There's one. 
Oh, we missed it. There's one right there. I'm pretty sure there's one in here, too. No. There, oh, there he is. Okay, so this one, I think, was actually hiding up on that ledge, if I remember correctly. Um, illusion wall. God, there's so much stuff in this area. More up here. And of course, one more hiding in the jar. This is the elevator, right? Yeah, okay. So, this is the way that we will progress to actually fight the next boss. All right, so that's what we'll do in the next episode. But in order to get to it, since I've shown you how to do it with this path where you take out the Ruined Sentinels first, I will uh, show you how to do it from the other way. So like I said, the, both of the paths actually link up. Um, basically in this room, we're actually gonna come up this elevator here. So all this will make, make uh, sense. Last thing before I go, that Skeptic's Spice I just picked up. There are Skeptic's Spices, lowers required faith by one for chosen spell. So, Faith, Skeptic, you probably see the uh, uh, connection there. There's also Simpleton's Spice, which lowers the intelligence requirement. Um, so you can actually use these spices to lower the requirements for certain spells. Really nice for saving levels, so like, uh, like um, let's see, like Lightning Spear takes 22 faith. If I pumped 12 spice into that, it'd only take 10 faith. Kind of a waste with that one since it's such a low requirement to use anyways. But, uh, you know, any of those ones like that take like 45 intelligence or something to use, lower that down to like 20. So it saves you like 25 level ups that you just pump into intelligence. So really nice. Uh, I actually am a fan of that feature in this game. But anyways, until next time, guys, thank you for watching and uh, have a good one.